My very first writing commission was, uh, I'd, I'd written a play for, for, for free. It was a, you know, a stage play that I'd put on in, uh, in Manchester. And luckily for, for me, um, a very good producer from Radio 4 came to see it and really liked it and basically came, came up to me afterwards and said, I think this would make a, this, I think this would make a fantastic radio play um, for Radio 4. And they bought it, you know, to, much to my surprise. And, and, you know, it was my first kind of paid work and it, it was fantastic. I, I didn't even have to write it, it was already written. So it was great. Um, and I'm, I'm sort of indebted really to radio for that because it was the first ever, you know, it was the first ever thing that I'd been paid to write. And, and it, was, it was brilliant to see it produced with real life actors and, you know, and it, it sort of, even though I haven't done that much radio since, I've, I still do some, um, it sort of paved the way really for, for other work. With, you know, with a show, for example, like Exile, I started thinking about that character that, that ultimately John Sim would play, Tom Ronstadt, and who he was, and built up a whole kind of backstory for him because it was very important that I knew his backstory to take him forward. So, so for a character like that, you know, you want him to be very complex and real and know a lot about his life. So I built up a kind of history for him. You don't always do that, I, I guess. Sometimes you kind of create a character who you want to sort of take forward and, and you kind of learn about them through taking them forward. I don't know, it's a very difficult process to sort of to get to grips with, but you have to just kind of make them, you have to make them flesh, you know, and sometimes that might be by basing them loosely on somebody you know or on parts of yourself or something, but you just have to kind of go through a process to make them real somehow. I, I probably started off kind of copying or, or you, you know, um, trying to be like other writers, uh, like Paul Abbott or, or Jimmy McGovern, you know, the, the kind of people I admired. But then what happens is you kind of, the more you write, the more you develop your own sort of style. And, and I think, you know, if you're good, you, you find the things within you that you want to speak about, which are going to be different to, you know, what Paul wants to speak about or whoever. There's a line in, in Shameless, it was one of the Shameless episodes, where, <laughs> for various reasons, um, th there's an ill kid in the episode, or pretend ill kid, and, uh, and one of the characters, Kev, is, is uh, pleasuring himself in a, in a phone box for, for other various reasons. And just out of nowhere, this old woman walks past him and just says, this kiddie's dying and you're doing that, you dirty bastard. <laughs> for some reason, it always sticks in my mind as kind of like something that you could just never do on any other show, you know? <laughs> it's not the greatest line of dialogue I've ever written, but something about that line that kind of just, you know, you go, yeah, that was shameless. Well, like I say, I, I, I sort of get, you know, I get up in the morning and take my kid to school and then go and have a coffee and uh, think about, and go to my office, think about what I've got to do, and then just start and carry on working until, you know, the end, the end of the sort of working day, really. Um, that's not always writing, you know, that's not always like at the computer, t tapping away, but you know, you're thinking, you're making notes, you're, you might occasionally go for a walk to unlock an idea um, you know you've got to treat it like a job if you if you just if you just faff about and wait for inspiration to strike then you'll never get it done really I mean you know you have to make inspiration sort of happen you have to make it you have to force it out <laughs> well a piece of, I mean a piece of advice that, that I've kind of written to myself on a number of occasions in fact I've got I've got a post-it note in my office that says learn to love the treatment which you know basically refers to the treatment document that you would prepare before you do a script because they can sometimes be such a tedious thing to have to do and you know you kind of want to get on with the script and you want to get on with the writing the dialogue and but if you unless you've got a road map I think you just don't know where you're going and so often people just start off on scripts and they've no idea where they're going and, and you know so even though doing a treatment and doing a kind of, you know, not necessarily a, t a beat by beat, but just a few pages, you know, three or four pages, so you know the start, middle and end of a story, I think is, is probably the most important lesson I would kind of put across to any writer, because I just think, 
you know, you, you, you just got to know where you're going, really. You've got to know roughly where the, the, the destination is. Otherwise, how do you know how to get there?